Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you how to do this simple smoke product reveal like this. So this is taken from a trailer that I made for one of my clients, Dr. Dabber. And this is a product that you would use for smoking. So a smoke simulation made sense. It's reversed, obviously, you know, I kind of just simulated it uh, covering the frame and then I reversed the footage in After Effects to reveal the product. So this will officially be the first episode of the Smoke and Fire tutorial series for Phoenix FD on my channel. So far I've only been doing liquid tutorials for the liquid series. There's about 33 liquid tutorials here for you guys that I tried to touch on some of the main features and things that you can do with Phoenix when it comes to liquids. And now I'm going to focus mainly on smoke and fire going forward. I'm still going to make liquid tutorials if I have a cool idea or if I just feel like making something. But for now, we're going to be focusing on fire and smoke, which I know that a lot of you have been waiting for. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe because I'll be posting a lot more tutorials in the following weeks. And without further ado, let's get into this. So um, my strategy is for you guys to grow with the channel. So we're going to start with some really simple, really basic uh, tutorials for smoke and fire. And then we're slowly going to get into the more advanced stuff. So this is basically just a simple emitter or two emitters, one on each side emitting the smoke. And I'm basically just playing with the smoke buoyancy. Um, to make the smoke essentially fall down and then have it rise up again as I rise the buoyancy up. So this should be your starter scene. I'm using this product model which was provided to me by my client, but you can use any product or anything that you would like. As always, I'm working in unit centimeters and one unit is one centimeter. Uh, create and Phoenix FD and instead of liquid sim, we're going to do fire smoke sim auto grid and just drag out a pretty big box to cover the entire scene. As you can see, basically the smoke comes in from outside of the frame. So we want to make sure that if the camera is about here, the smoke will not get cut off anywhere. So let's go under the settings and we can make the grid just a little bit smaller here like this. And maybe it's a little too tall. So something like that would work. And let's create our emitter. So these will be just um, two cylinders. So we can just make a cylinder here, rotate it 90 degrees like that. And then we can make it an edible poly. This process will be the same as it was for the liquid. So basically we're just going to define the polygon that will emit the smoke. So we can set this to ID five and then we can set the rest to an ID maybe four. And then what you can do if you don't want to add two emitters is you can just copy the element over, copy to element and flip this and move it over here. So this is still ID5 and this is ID5, but it's just one object. So we can rename this emitter and then we can go under helpers, Phoenix of D and make a PHX source which has the fire logo. And then we can just pick our emitter object, set the outgoing velocity to 25 and let's set the temperature to 400, which is pretty low. It basically controls how fast the smoke will rise or fall down. Um, so this temperature just kind of makes it hover, but we're going to control uh, the behavior of the smoke with the buoyancy parameter. But before we do that, make the polygon ID five in here. So under the grid, uh, one of the great things about smoke is that you really don't need a whole lot of resolution to make it look good. I think that this sim was only about 2 million particles. I'm at 4 million right now, which should be plenty with one centimeter cell size. And let's uh, make the container walls jammed both on all axes so that the smoke will bounce um, against the walls rather than being killed. And then for the dynamic settings, I actually didn't change anything here. 
The only thing I changed was the smoke buoyancy. So basically for the first about, I believe 65 frames, um, the buoyancy is set to minus two. So again, from frame zero to frame 65, the buoyancy is at minus two, and then from frame 65 to 75, the smoke buoyancy rises to one. And then under output, you might want to check velocity if you want to render this with motion blur and select a path that you want to simulate this into. And then just for the sake of this test, I'm going to make the resolution much smaller so that I can simulate this faster. And I'm just going to go under simulation and start. And one of the great things about this is that you can mess with the settings in real time. So if I don't feel like waiting until frame 65 for this to start rising up, I can just move the keyframes. And now you can see that the smoke is being affected by the buoyancy, which has risen to one. And now it's rising up. And at this point, this is basically all I did to achieve this effect. As you can see, what I did here was I just had the smoke start pretty high up first. So it kind of like falls down. And then as it, as it reaches the product, um, the buoyancy rises and the, and the product is covered. So at this point, what I would do is I would just uh, make the emitter not renderable. So right click and make it not renderable. And then what I did was um, just add a few lights. So I already have those here. So I'll just unhide my lights. And at this point I could just come here into my camera, make sure all my settings are good and just hit render. And you can see that the smoke is already um, being rendered and everything is working. Um, the way to control the color of the smoke is to go under under rendering here and click on volumetric options. And then you can go under smoke color and you can mess with the constant color here to make the smoke darker if you would like. And then um, for the thumbnail, I just added some blue lights to make it more interesting. So what I did was I would just copy this V-Ray light, turn it 90 degrees, put it behind the smoke, like that maybe make it a blue color and set the multiplier to something much higher so maybe five and now if i hit render you can see that i'm getting that blue glow um, behind the smoke so i just wanted to give you guys a super quick overview of how this is done you have the tools now to play with this smoke simulation to get it to look the way you would like it to look, um, you know, just be aware that with each added light, um, the rendering the rendering times will increase. Um, but it does render pretty fast. It definitely renders much faster than Fume Effects, which is almost impossible to render with V-Ray. So I hope that you guys found this introductory tutorial helpful. There's going to be a lot more coming out in the next few weeks, so keep an eye out for them. Um, thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you later.